When working with page layout programs, it's important to kind of always be on track for whatever your particular output is. And so I put together a list of do's and don'ts for working with the page layout programs. Specifically, you can bring artwork into InDesign from outside of InDesign. And to do that, you would place it. Choose File and then Place, and you can bring something in from the outside. And it creates a link to wherever the item is saved on your computer. And so you should save it in an appropriate place, and then choose File, Place, and it creates that link. And unless you break the link, it'll always be linked for you. And so when it's time to package, it will package it nicely for you. And so when you're going to bring in artwork from outside of InDesign, and you're preparing your artwork for print, you want to bring in high resolution, meaning 300 resolution, as opposed to 72 resolution, which was described as low resolution. Um, high resolution TIFF files, which are great for raster-based images or Photoshop images. High resolution EPS files, which are great for vector art or illustrator type files. Or even high resolution PDF files. In addition, you can bring in native files like a .psd Photoshop file or .ai file. For our class, I just want you to stick to these three. Uh, specifically the TIFFs and the EPSs because I want you to start recognizing what file formats are good for raster based images versus vector and eventually you should know what the difference is even though we haven't covered that just yet. And then you are absolutely positively never going to place a GIF, a JPEG, or a PNG file because those are web file formats and their main objective is to prep an image for the web, meaning that it would have as small a resolution and as small a file size as possible. And so it's going to downsample your file. Some of these have, um, well, they all have compression. Some of them have lossy compression and some of them have lossless compression. But either way, the compression is going to make the file size smaller and it's going to kind of lose some quality or, um, or some pixels in the process. And so it's going to try to take um, your big file, which you want for printing, and kind of make it as small as possible. For example, a JPEG, it has lossy file, um, file compression. Every time you hit save, a JPEG will throw out some data in order to make the file smaller. And so if you're working in a JPEG and you save and save and save and save every time you hit save, um, it's going to try to make the file size smaller and eventually you're going to have significant image quality loss or noticeable image quality loss. Um, when you were talking about preparing images for use in your print projects, it's important to know what resolution is. And so resolution is defined as the number of pixels per square inch in an image. And we say that standard printing resolution is 300 dots per inch, and standard web or monitor resolution is 72, it should say PPI, pixels per inch. So there are... There are these terms DPI and PPI that are kind of used interchangeably. And in the Art 1200 class, I don't care if you call it DPI or PPI, but if you would like the definition, dots per inch refers to halftone dots, and it's you're saying that you're preparing something for printing, and when you print something, you convert the artwork to color separations, and each color separation, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black for printing, is printed in a series of dots, and those dots are called halftone dots. If you use the term PPI, you're describing pixels per inch, and so you, when you look at something on the computer screen, it has pixels. And so if you're looking at something on a screen, it's in pixels, and if you're preparing artwork, you're going to say that it has 300 DPI um, in preparation for dots per inch for halftone dots. It's, it's more complicated than that, but as a general kind of rule of thumb, DPI is dots per inch, and you're saying that image is intended for print, and PPI is pixels per inch, and you're saying the image is intended to only be displayed digitally. So standard printing resolution is 300 DPI or PPI, however you want to take that for right now. And then standard web or monitor or display resolution is 72 PPI or DPI. And so when you're prepping your artwork, you're going to, to format the artwork in Photoshop or in Illustrator, depending on what you're doing, or you're going to export it or save a copy from Illustrator, and you're going to kind of shoot for those two resolution settings. The reason that we need to have different resolutions is because of the capabilities of different outputs. A computer monitor can't show us any better than 72 dpi. And so if I look at the image of the little computer on the bottom right hand side of my slide, you can see that the 300 dpi image and the 72 dpi image on screen looks exactly the same. And so if I have 72 or 100 or 150 or 390 um, resolution, I'm not getting any better image quality for the most part by displaying that on the web. The only thing that I'm having is a larger file size and when you're displaying something on the web you want the smallest file size possible. But now if we look at the top image, those are printed images. Pretend that I, I printed those on paper and they're little posters. The 300 dpi image, it looks the same as it did on the computer. It is nice and it's crisp and it's clear and it's supposed to be the way that it is. 
But if I print a low resolution version of that or lower than what I need for printing, which we say is 300, um, you can start to see quality loss. And in this example, the same image that looks fine on the computer, 72 DPI, looks horrible when it's printed. And so we're not going to talk about images until we get to module six, but you should start to know this. You should know resolution is fine as the number of pixels per square inch. If we squeeze more into every one inch, we get a higher uh, resolution image and higher image quality. And if we spread them further apart and we put less pixels per every one inch, um, then we'll have lower image quality and we'll have lower file sizes in return. Now, resolution only affects pixel-based images, and so pixel-based images are called raster images, and they are images made from pixels. And so when I'm talking about resolution as being defined as the number of pixels per square inch, if an image doesn't have pixels, it doesn't have resolution. And that's kind of hard to interpret because it's tangible and you can see pixels, right? And so if I look at the screen, and I look at my example down there of a leaf, the leaf looks like a leaf, but if I zoom in really close to it, you can actually see it's made up of little tiny squares, and those squares are called pixels. Every pixel can have one bit of data, so it's either red, or it's red-orange, or it's green, or it's blue, whatever it happens to be. It cannot have a pattern or a texture. It can't even have two colors. It cannot fade from yellow to blue in the same pixel. Each pixel is just one color. And when you zoom out from those pixels until you can't see the pixels anymore, they're so small you can't see them, then you create the illusion that you have an actual photograph or an image. But if you zoom in, you just have a bunch of little squares. And so what we say when we talk about resolution is that the more squares we can squeeze into the image, the more realistic it will look like, right? Because if I look at this leaf, the leaf has all um, square edges all the way around it, kind of like um, sawtooth or something around the edge. But as I zoom out, it creates the illusion that there are curves and bends and twists in the image, and we create the illusion of that. And so raster-based images are resolution dependent, meaning that they have a set number of pixels, and that if we were to stretch the image and make it larger, or if we squeeze the image and we make it smaller, we're going to cause some distortion and pixelation in some way. And so if you stretch it and you make it bigger, it's called upsampling, and that's like really bad because Photoshop's not going to have enough data to fill in the pixels, so it's going to make it up. Um, if you were to shrink it or squish it together, you're going to have to throw some pixels out in order to make it a smaller size, and that's okay. It's better than making up pixels from scratch. And so if you add pixels, like you want to stretch it and make it bigger, it's called upsampling. If you're going to squeeze it down and make it smaller and you have to get rid of some pixels, it's called downsampling, and that's not as bad as upsampling. Raster-based images can be found in a variety of ways. If you capture them with your digital camera, they're automatically raster-based images. Um, if you scan something on a computer, they're raster-based images. And most times when you think of raster-based images, you think of Photoshop files. And so we're going to say that we're going to edit pixel or raster-based images in Photoshop. And then we're going to learn about a new type of file called vector images. And we're going to say that we edit those in Illustrator just to kind of keep them separate. But keep in mind that you can edit both types of images inside either program. It just wouldn't be entirely appropriate. And so for our purposes, anytime an image is raster-based, I would like you to save it as a TIFF file because, as we noted, TIFFs or high-resolution TIFFs are really good for raster-based images.